Hi, welcome back to New Zealand for some more advanced data mining with Weka. This is the last lesson on the time series forecasting facilities. We're going to look at some features that we haven't uh, looked at so far. First of all, the timestamp uh, that any attribute of type date is used by default as a timestamp, but you can change this under the basic configuration parameters. I've uh, loaded the airline data once again, and if I go to the forecast panel, it's going to use date as a timestamp, but I could change that to another attribute if I wanted. Also, the periodicity. We've been detecting the periodicity automatically. This data is monthly. I think it's 143 monthly instances, but we can specify something else if we prefer. So we could actually specify, let's say, weekly. This is not necessarily a very sensible thing to do, but what would happen if we specified weekly? First of all, it affects the lagged variables, the variables that are generated. So now we've got uh, a large number of lagged variables. Actually, with weekly data, we've got 52 lagged variables generated 52 weeks in a year, a whole year's worth. Uh, and as well as that, it inserts new Weka inserts interpolated instances for the missing values. So if we specify, we try and do this weekly and the data was only monthly, then there's a whole lot of weeks which need to be interpolated. And these are them, these weeks. And there's a long list of weeks here which have been interpolated into the data. And then, of course, in order to get values for the uh, training instances, they're all missing values. So the, uh, the Weka interpolates uh, the values for all of the attributes, so these have been these values have been interpolated. So in this case, the airline data monthly is 144 instances. Uh, weekly is we've got 573 instances here, and if I were to specify hourly, we'd have 104,000 instances. And the periodicity, as I said, determines what attributes are created. Different uh, numbers of lagged variables depending on whether it's monthly, weekly, daily, or hourly. And uh, if it's daily, then we include a day of the week attribute, uh, weekend attributes. If it's hourly, we include a morning or afternoon attribute. And of course, you can override all of these attributes using the advanced configuration panel. I bet you're tired of the airline data now. I'm going to open another data set, the Apple Stocks data. We need to find this data. Uh, when you install a package in Weka, it installs the package information in your home folder. So I'm going to go to my home folder, Weka files, packages, time series forecasting package. And here I've got some sample data, time series forecasting data. I'm going to open Apple Stocks. Now, this data contains more than one thing to predict. It's actually got the daily high, low, opening and closing values for the Apple stocks in the year 2011, plus the sales volume. So I'm going to go here and tell the forecast. I need to tell it what to forecast. I'm going to forecast close. And uh, let me just see what happens. It's generated lags here. Uh, it's generated 12 lags. I think I want to tell it this data is weekly, actually. Um, I don't think it's uh, figured that out. So let's, the periodicity is weekly. No, I'm sorry. The periodicity is daily for this data. Let me uh, do that. And now I've got, I've got seven lagged variables for the seven, so a whole week's worth of lagged variables. And uh, there were some missing values. Some instances were inserted, a few instances. Those are mostly weekends, actually, those instances. Uh, and that's what the skip list is for. I don't really want to include weekends because the stock market is closed. If I type weekend here and do this again, then I will have reduced the number of interpolated instances. There are still a few of them, five of them, and those correspond to holidays when the stock exchange was closed. So I can actually specify a list of dates here, as well as the word weekend. I specified a list of dates in a format that's on the slide. 
Uh, let me just try that. Now I'm hoping for no interpolated instances. Yeah, there's none there. And I think what I'd like to do is to specify under the lags, I want to use maybe two weeks worth. That'll be 10 working days. So let's up that number to 10. Okay, that's the data prepared. Now let's do some evaluation on this data. First of all, I'm going to remove the leading instances, which we find to be the ones with unknown lag values, which is a good idea. And then we're going to hold out some of the instances. So let's go and remove leading instances. And then go to evaluation. We're going to evaluate on training and test. And I'm going to leave this at 30%. We're going to use 30% of the data set for testing. Okay, and I'm going to look here at the mean absolute error. So uh, we've got uh, these numbers here, 7.7 .7 on the slide. You can see that uh, when we remove, since we've removed the leading instances, we've got slightly better results than if we hadn't have done that. We can predict more than one target with this data. And we're, if we do that, we're going to get lagged versions of each of the targets, and that might help. So let's go and predict close and high. So we're going to get lagged values of both of these variables. And it's possible we might get better predictions. Well, actually, we don't. These are the values we get. Uh, 8 on the test data and 3.4 on the training data, slightly worse than before. And if we were to select all of the variables as targets, we'd get even worse results. We get quite bad overfitting here with a much smaller training error, 2.5, than the test error, 9.6. Now, another thing that you need to know about is overlay data. Overlay data is additional data that might be relevant to the prediction. It's not to be forecast, it can't be predicted, and it's available in the future. Overlay data is available in the future. We don't have overlay data for the Apple stocks problem, but I'm going to kind of cheat by using uh, one of the existing attributes as though it were overlay data, as though we knew it even in the future. So let me just predict close, and then I'm going to go and specify some overlay data we're going to use open as overlay data. And uh, I can then uh, see what happens. And I got a complaint here from Weka. It's unable to generate a future forecast because there's no future values available for the overlay data. Well, let's just stop it trying to generate future forecasts. Uh, if I just take out these output future predictions and do it again, then yeah, I won't get that error message. And Back on the slide, we can see that the uh, overlay data has improved things quite a bit by including open. The test uh, error has got down to 5.9. And if we include high as well, it gets down even further. And although I won't do this for you, if I were to change the base learner to SMO, a better learner, I would get even better results down to a very small error on the test data, 2.4. Uh, and in fact, I would get these graphs if I looked at predictions. Again, to save time, I won't do that. But you can see the prediction on the training data, the prediction on the test data. We're getting very good predictions using this overlay data. Well, we've covered uh, quite a few options in the time series forecasting package. When you're starting with a new data set, uh, you should start by getting the time axis right. Uh, don't forget that uh, missing instances are automatically interpolated and uh, you can uh, select the periodicity yourself if you like. And there's a skip facility to ensure that time increases linearly. Then you need to select your target, what you're going to predict, or targets. Now, overlay data can help a lot, obviously, if you can get a hold of it. That's always wonderful. We haven't looked at quite a few features of this package. We haven't looked at confidence intervals, adjusting for variance, and a bunch of other things. Um, you can read about that in the documentation for the package. And uh, here's a reference to uh, the whole approach, this regression approach to time series analysis, which was followed when building Weka's time series forecasting package. So off you go, do the activity, and we'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about an application of Weka. Bye for now.